Two more words up to this side. And like I say, you know what's cool about this? You can explore all of these and all of a sudden all kinds of things open up. So, you know, obviously, and this was told to me, which should have been up there right off the bat, and that is creative. Creative, creator, creativity, right? That is part of the ontology of God or we wouldn't be here. So another one, um, how would I put this? I'll, I'm going to put this in the negative. Never alone. Never alone. Because the ontology of the Trinity is that they are mutually interpenetrated. And so aloneness is not part of the ontology of God. That's a big deal. And we'll probably get into that a little bit more. So, we are now going to talk about the ontology of being human and the way of being human. Ooh, this gets really interesting. And <clears throat> so, what is the truth about being human? Now let me tell you what I was taught. And, and not only was I taught this by the church, uh, by the institutional religious Christianity that I grew up inside of, um, which made it all the worse actually, but I was, I was whispered or yelled about my ontology by experience. So I learned, I learned a lot of the truth of my being, as I thought it was, from the way. In other words, my experience, my existential experience, became how I defined my ontology. Right? See, that doesn't happen with God. Because God's holy. That's what the word perfect, when it's translated into the Latin, and the, from the Greek, it's integer, or it's uh, the idea of two sides of an equation being equal, right? This is the same as this, right? That's perfection. It's not some kind of moral purity. It's wholeness. It's integration. Integration comes from the same word, right? So, so God is holy. God is whole. Therefore, God's being is integrated. Oh, get this. The name of God. Um, I am, we didn't put up the, we didn't put up the, the way of God's being. What did I do with that? Oh, same list thing. Okay. We didn't put that one up. But we need to put that one up. So, I'll wait for Jonathan or somebody to stick that one up. You want to help me put that? Yeah, thank you. Just right there, that'd be great. Um, right next to it. Yep. And so, this is where we're going to put the way of God's being, right? Which is the same list, yeah? So we're going to say, my name is I am, so I am. You liking this? Yeah. Come on. Got it. Yeah. I got it. But do you understand how profound that is? My name is I am, so I am. Because I'm holy. I'm whole. The way of my being matches the truth of my being. And I learned what I thought was the truth of my being from my experience. And, and let me tell you, Sexual abuse will absolutely and fundamentally crush the sense of the truth of your being, anything other than worthless, useless, trash, to be used. Another reason I hate that term, right? And, and then my dad didn't know how to be a dad and beat the crap out of me and, you know, that whispered to me, you're, you're useless. Then I went to boarding school at six and big boys came and molested the little boys at night. And 
in order to have a sense of belonging, you had to kind of sell parts of yourself. Yeah? And then not belonging at all, not fitting into culture, because now I find out I'm white, which was a big disappointment. And, <clears throat> and then at 10 years old, being dropped into a Canadian culture, which I didn't understand at all, and it was so cold. My experience reinforced what I heard as the truth of my being from my theology. My dad was a preacher. He preached, what is the truth of your being? I, I call this post. Piece of shit theology. The truth of your being is your piece of shit. And by the way, shit is in the Bible, so get over <laughs> get over it, right? Like it is. It's, Paul uses it. Paul, when you say shit, you're quoting scripture. So <laughs> the, Greek word, the Greek word actually starts with an S as well. So you could, if you, if you can't say shit, say scubala. Scubala. Paul uses it when he says, all these good things, all these good ways, being a Pharisee of Pharisees, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, all that, all the good things, all the good ways of being, I consider scubala, right? King James, dung. New, Mer New International, nothing. <laughs> Trust me, shit is not nothing, right? And, and I mean, you could say, what are some of the other really... See, defecation sounds way worse than shit. You know? They call it refuse. Refuse, yes. I consider it all refuse. So, that would make port rather than post, but that's all right. So, but, but, I cannot begin to tell you... Oh, what, what was the theological language we used for this? To, to communicate this, right? That you're just... Oh, sinner? That's a good one. There's some worse ones. What's another one? Worm. Huh? Worm. Worm! There's one. Like, what's wrong with worms, really? But it's, like, not good. Fallen? Fallen, Fallen is one, yeah. Fallen could work into that. So could, how about depraved? Yeah. Lost, yeah. How about... Um, Bad, yes. Bad to the bone. How about, there's another one. It's, oh, oh. Wicked. Wicked is a good one. Rebel. Wicked, rebel. Here's one. Sin nature. Sin nature. Nature, is that a way of being or an ontology statement? Ontology. It's ontology. You are, you have a sinful nature. Nature, nature. That is as deep as it goes, right? So the truth of your being is, you're a sinner, a worm, fallen, depraved, lost, bad, wicked, a rebel, and you're that way by nature. That is your ontology. And even though you wouldn't say, oh, yeah, I buy into that, here, necessarily, if you're confronted by it, you buy into it here. You've been told it, you've been communicated, the whole world works on this, you're only as good as your last performance. Your ontology is underlying the way of your being. And people who are stuck here, you wonder why people outside the church seem to be healthier in many respects? Because this isn't starting at zero. This is starting at way below zero. And it doesn't get any better until you die. Right? Jesus doesn't even make you better. He just covers you up. That's how he gets you past God the Father and into heaven, is that you are, you, 
You are, what did they, what is it? Something covered dung. What is that? There's a sentence. You are something covered dung. Um, but, but, but the idea was that, that Jesus has to get you into heaven. So, but you're just a piece of shit. So it's like, how do we do this? So he covers you with his robes of righteousness so he can sneak you into heaven. And God the Father is like, do you smell that? <laughs> and Jesus is like, shh, 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 shh. nope, nope, nope. Atonement, um, sanctification, redemption, you know. Uh, nope, nope, don't smell anything. Mm -mm. And we're like, please, Jesus, don't go to the bathroom. You know, it's like, right? Ah. Do you understand how deeply ingrained this is? So, guess what? If that's your ontology, if that's the truth of your being, what is the call of religion to do? How, if that's the truth of who you are, how are you going, what kind of life are you supposed to live? Right? What is the way of your being supposed to look like if this is the truth of your being? But, yeah, yeah, you're... Your piece of garbage and all that, yes. But here's what you need to do. Pray and ask the Holy Spirit to give you some patience because, you know, you by nature, since you have a sin nature, like kind of screwed. So um, you got to just do the best you can. I mean, have you ever felt in your life that, that the righteousness that you were doing was just faking it? It was just a cover-up, right? And this is so the disrupted, blind human condition, right? If you knew who I really was, right? Ontology, right? If you knew the truth about who I am, you'd walk away. You would be disgusted. You would abandon me. Right? What does abandonment teach a child? I'm not worth. What? And you go back into the psyche of human beings and you run right into this. Right? Evolution says the same thing. It doesn't use these words, but it says slime, you know. And so you're like crawling out of the primordial slime, you know, but it's basically the same thing. You're just a piece of slime. Now, now, you know, become something better, right? And so a lot of Christianity is, it's focused, the assumption is that this is our ontology. So, so the way of our being is to do what? Hide the truth of our being, right? I got another pin, there, there it is. Hide. Right? And present something that is holy. And be holy because God is holy. Oh, no, no, be perfect. Right? So are all those words about being perfect and all that, are they ontological words or are they behavioral existential words? Behavioral existential words. Okay, well, let me, let me show you this. Wow. Tia, whatever. Believe that or not, that, that's the English translation is hamartia. Hamartia. Hamartia, that's Greek. Hamartia. Ha, ha is a negation. It's like dis or un, right? It's a negation of this, right? Martia comes from meros, which is root or origin or form, nature. But we translate it, we interpret it as what? Missing the mark. Right? Hamartia, missing the mark. What's the mark? Humanity. Is, yeah, because we happen to be human, right? Okay? That's part of our ontology. 
Is the mark ontology or is the mark behavior? Behavior. That's how we think of it, yeah? Missing the mark of right behavior. Because we've already assumed our ontology is that we're a piece of garbage, right? So, so sin is, is, not, is not missing you know, our ontology, which is already screwed up, so that can't be it. So it's got to be our behavior. And suddenly we're sin conscious because we have a sin nature, and now everything in order to fix it is about our behavior. And we love the law for that reason. Because well, we love self-discipline, right? Because it's a law. It's, not, it's actually a work of the flesh, right? It's not actually comes from the inside. It comes from the outside in. But since we don't have any self-control, I mean, we've got to go to self-discipline. I mean, it's the next best thing. Because ontology doesn't allow us to have self-control. Because you have a sin nature. How are you going to be self-controlled? You've got to fake it. With what? Self-discipline. Anything that is ontologically true... Does, does this come from within God or from outside of God? Within God. So, whatever the ontology of being human is, does it come from inside of the human or outside? Inside. Another name for this would be... Huh. Carmel, Indiana. Wonder who do I know in Carmel, Indiana? <laughs> Are you beginning to see kind of where I'm going here? Because this is what we've been told, what is the truth of our being? What is actually our ontology? So my question is, shame is going to be <gasps> Shame. Okay, because shame, guilt says I've done way of being, I've done something wrong. Shame says I am something wrong. Shame is an attack against ontology. Guilt is an exposure of existential experience. This is why guilt is legit. And shame has absolutely no place in the human experience. Zero. So Be why do I do the prayer of confession? Ah, we'll talk about that. Because we're dealing with the way of our being. And we've got to deal with the way of our being. Because we're all screwed up in our heads and are blind and all these other things. So there is a process of having to uncover the truth but is the truth coming from outside in, or is the truth coming from inside out? Back off a second. So, what is the truth of your being? Very good. Oh, very good. Wow. How, I mean, could, you, could we sum up the truth of our being? Hey? What did she say? She said, very good. The truth of our being is we're very good. Now, that would that'd be contradictory here. See, if we're going to talk about being very good, if we believed all this crap, I'm, you know, <laughs> if we believed all of this, to be very good was, means that you are good in your behavior, even though you're still a piece of shit, right? So here's why we have a prayer of confession. Well, let me come back to that, because there's a better way to say it. So. How about you are created in the image and likeness of a sin nature? Oh, no, 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 that's not what it says, right? Oh, no, we're creating the image and likeness of God. We're cre we, oh, wait a minute. <gasps> Same list. Oh my God, I mean, there's a few things that aren't quite the same, but, but look, we're never alone. 
Because creation is created in Christ. We're inside the relationship of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Smallest group you'll ever be in is four. Right? That's called solitude. Right? After that is community. So, never alone. Creative, every human being is a creative. If you don't believe it, tell me if you've ever been worried about anything and created the imaginations of things going bad. Right? You're a creative. All right. You're good. You're made in the image of a God who's good. You're good. You're personal. Your person matters. Your uniqueness, right? You're powerful. Trust me. Even God submits to you. Yeah. What do you think the cross is if it's not God submitting to our darkness? Yeah? You're beautiful. Creation. In fact, the Hebrew word for it is good is good is the word beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. It's so very beautiful. Fiery fury. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do that. You can be that, right? If something is hurting the ones you love, where do you think that that fury originates, right? Patient, pure of heart, long-suffering, self-control, kind, non-judgmental, but judgmental, in that you can make an observation about where something is wrong and broken and all this. You can say, this is wrong. And it's wrong. Because there are things that are wrong. Yeah? Body, soul, spirit, kind of a trinity, sort of, in a way. Not really, but... Um, <laughs> submission. Uh, your nature is that. That is the truth of your being. And wholeness is when the way of your being matches, expresses, incarnates the truth of your being. So the mark, missing the mark, is the mark of your ontology. Not your behavior. Your behavior is the way of your being because you believe a lie. Because you're still in darkness. Because you're confused. So the truth of your being is all of that covered up by all the crap that you've been told and you've believed and you've perpetrated yourself and you've convinced yourself of. So if you say, I am an impatient person, I'm just an impatient person, liar. <laughs> you can be impatient, you can act impatiently, but the truth of your being is that you're not impatient. Because it's a fruit of the Spirit, and you're created in the Spirit. The Spirit lives in you, right? You're made in the image and likeness of God. Everything God is like, you're like. So suddenly, I begin to have a revelation on the inside that I'm pure of heart. And as that revelation emerges, it heals me of an addiction to porn that all the self-discipline, all the fear of hell, and all the accountability groups could not even get close to. Because I began to understand the truth of my being. And as I began to trust the truth of my being as pure of heart, it destroyed the addiction in the way of my being. The way of my being naturally began to be an expression and incarnation of the truth of my being. Do you follow what I am saying to you? This is why the kingdom of God work is where the kingdom of God is. And the kingdom of God is in you. This is why you do the work. Because God cannot heal you apart from your participation. Because this is a God who submits by nature. A God who absolutely dignifies your ability to say no. To say no to love. No to kindness. No to forgiveness. And that ability God will protect. While trying to dismantle it because it's hurting the ones he loves. But that's the truth of your being. Not this. 
and missing the mark is missing the mark of your ontology, of your form, your origin, your being, not missing the mark of your behavior. But because we think we're a piece of crap, we spend our lives trying to modify our behavior and everybody else's. You know what we're hoping? If I can just do this perfectly, I will change my ontology into something else than being a piece of garbage. And you only feel like you're as good as your last success, and now you have a failure, now you have to recommit your life back to Jesus. So I'm talking with a young man who hurt someone that I dearly love. And at first he starts the little narcissistic dance where you kind of shift the blame to the other person. Right? Doesn't want to own. And I let him talk for a while, but I don't buy it. And I tell him, I'm so not impressed. I'm also really angry. All right? And he immediately drops into this. He's a preacher's kid. Drops right there. And he says his words. As tears start running down his face, all I am is a piece of shit. His words. My words. If there's anyone on this planet who knows you're not just a piece of shit, it's me. But you are full of shit. <laughs> right? Because I'm telling him that the way of his being doesn't match the truth of his being. That's the confession of prayer. That's the prayer of confession. It's not about ontology. It's about existential experience. Wholeness is when the way of our being matches the truth of our being. The question is, what's the truth of our being? You know when we have um, all this word glory, right? It's in a lot of our praise songs that we don't understand. And, um, but it's kind of like, what do you think you know, glory is? Uh, glorify your name and glory this and glory that. You know, what's glory? Is it like sparkling lights and, you know, wouldn't be crystals because that's too new agey, but, but, but you know, it's like the outshining effervescence of shimmering stuff. The word glory means the essential nature of a person, place, or thing. That's its glory. That's why Jesus is the glory of the Father, because he is the exact representation and nature of the Father. So, guess how our transformation is seen by God? Is it seen from cruddy to glory, or from glory to glorier? You're transformed from <gasps> glory to glory. You can't change someone's ontology by just changing their behavior. The Holy Spirit has to show up and reveal to them the truth of who they are so that the way of who they are can match it. And from God's point of view, that's a movement from glory to glory. But everybody gets salted with fire, which is the love of God. So that the way of our being suddenly begins to more and more match the truth of our being. I'm kind. I am patient. I'm good. I'm a, creating, a creative person. And I'm powerful. Ah. Oh. So. Flex my Bible. All right, so let's just uh, take a look at something. And, um, and uh, well, let's first let's start. Let's finish that passage uh, that I was working on earlier from from Acts 17 is where I was quoting it, by the way. And in Acts 17, it's Paul's Paul's address to the pagans on Mars Hill, right? So these people are like Ur of the Chaldees people, right? They're just like buried in their stuff, and they're they're like they're like lost, you know. And um, I keep my eye on what my time is here. Oh, we're doing good. And um, 
See, because we, we, used, we used lost. We used lost as, um, you know, those, that's lost over here. Because that's, that's where you are. And how do you get unlost, right? You have an experience, you, you say the magic. You do the magic, say the sinner's prayer or whatever. And, and so now you're suddenly not lost, but you're still a piece of shit, right? So, um, so then you have all this conflict about the Christian life and about all this changing your behavior so that you act more like God even though you're still a piece of shit. But, but so that's a problem. And um, so uh, what does it mean to be lost? Because, you know, because here's the, here's the thing about this. If what I'm saying is true, that we are made in the image and likeness of God, which kind of is true, you know, it's a hard one to really fight. But if I'm saying that, who does it apply to? Everybody. I know. I know like everybody. Well, see, that's kind of destructive to our us and them mentality. It just kind of like screws up the whole thing, you know. And, and, but at least we got lost people. They're lost. They're over there. They're lost, you know. They're lost. Huh. How does... Tell them I'm busy. How does, how does Scripture talk about lost? How about the parables of the Trinity? You know which ones? There's three in a row. The first one's about the Holy Spirit. The second one's about Jesus. And the third one's about God the Father. You know what they are? It's the parables of the Trinity. The first one is a woman who loses a coin. All the language is Holy Spirit language. There's a lamp. It's in her own house. <gasps> you can be lost in the house of the Holy Spirit. Oh my gosh. Right? The second one's about a shepherd. Ooh, wonder who that is. Huh. Okay, we got Jesus, right? And, you're, and this, one, this one's lost because he's stupid, because sheep are stupid. And, you know, sheep can get lost in their backyard. They give, so, it's, you know, it's so, but he leaves the 99 because the one matters, because everyone matters, right? So Jesus is the shepherd. And then you've got the father and the two lost sons. Yeah? God the father. So you've got Trinity parable, and you've got a definition of lost. So, so, Here's what it means to be lost. You have to first belong. Because, and you always belong, even when you're lost. Because, because what? Whose coin is it when it's not lost? It's the woman's. Whose coin is it when it's lost? Still the woman's. And when they find it, whose, whose coin is it? It's hers. It's her coin. It's his sheep. And it's his sons. Yeah? So to be lost, you have to first belong. I love that. Yeah? So, so, the woman who loses the coin, the shepherd and the sheep, and the father and the sons, and lost is, I belong. But I'm in the house, and I don't know where I am. And the Holy Spirit finds me. Yeah? And the shepherd comes and finds me. And the father runs to the son and finds him. And when the older brother is freaking out because he, he did all the way of being right. And the, and the father's constantly saying, what did the father say to the son that went out and spent everything? He doesn't say anything. He doesn't even, he doesn't even listen to his confession that he's been practicing because the confession's all about the way of being. Right? What does he do? He runs to him and he communicates through visual arts that he still belongs. He's always belonged. Puts a, puts a ring on his finger, puts a coat, has a party, all saying you've never not belonged. And then the older, the older brother's pissed off because he's, he's done the way of being perfectly. He's, he's the righteous. He's, he's done it right, right? And so the father goes to him, goes and finds him because frankly, religious people are the hardest people for God to reach. It's always been that way. Right? They've always had the furthest to go. Why? Because God's not religious. Never been religious. You won't find religion on that list. We make up religions. Right? Because we need separation for job security. We need magic so that we can be the experts to tell you how to do the magic. And then we need a sacrifice. Somebody's got to pay, you know? On the gross, of course. And... Um, 
So, I mean, we're religious, God's not. And, and religion gives us the opportunity to put our trust in the way of our being rather than in the truth of our being, who is Jesus. Because he is exact, he is the glory of God. Yeah? Sweet. So, um, so here's, here's this passage. Now listen to it with, with new ears because, because you're going to hear things that are ontological here. Right? Um, I'm in Corinthians. I don't know how I'm in Corinthians, but I know I'm in Acts 17. Oh, that's where that piece of paper fell out from. Okay, I'm here. The God who made the world and all things in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. We know where he dwells, yeah? Yeah? This is Paul talking to the pagans. So he's like dropping the bombs on them. Like, so he, you know, he starts inside their language and he's just making a point. If he made the whole thing, he's not going to get stuck in one. Yeah, don't put God in a box. He's not a member of your denomination, right? Jesus, thank God he left before he had to become a Christian, you know? <laughs> that way he doesn't have to act like one. So, the God who made that world and all things in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to everyone life and breath and all things. I'd put all good things, because evil doesn't originate from God, right? And he made from one person, Adam, every, one man, every nation of mankind to live on the face of the earth, determined appointed times and boundaries, that they would seek for God, if perhaps they might grope for him and find him. This is Paul. And find him. Although, although, right? Uh, He's not far from each one of us. And then he drops the bomb. For in him we live and move and have our being. When did he start talking to the church? He's still talking to the pagans. And he just told them, in him you live and move and have your being. In him. You're in him. And then he says, And even some of your own poets have said, For we also are his children. Guess what? The true ontology of being human is not only made in the image and likeness of God, but you are a child of God. And you won't meet a person who's not. You will never meet a person who does not move and have their being in him. You, you know, even, even when you raised your fists against the character and nature of God, you're doing it with Christological air. Yeah? Being then the children of God, I'm still reading like scripture, right? Being then the children of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature, this is Paul who's now become an esoteric, right, a new ager. Being then the children of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by art and thought of a human being. Therefore, having overlooked the times of ignorance, God is now declared to everyone everywhere that all people everywhere should change their minds. Acts 17. All of creation is created in Christ. John 14, 20, 1, 20, 20. This is what the Holy Spirit is going to teach you. I am in the Father, you are in me, and I am in you. In you, you will not meet a person who is not already in Christ, because in him they live and move and have their being. You will not meet a person who Christ is not in, because they would lapse into non-being. See, this kind of tampers with our special us -this -ness of the being evangelicals and all that kind of stuff, you know? Okay, listen to this one. Ooh, I like this. When you start to distinguish between ontology and existential existence, 
the ontological truth of our being versus the way of our being, passages will suddenly just like open up to you. The salvation of the entire cosmos, the reconciliation between God and the cosmos was finished in Jesus. That is ontologically true. This is a statement that is true and worthy of full ex acceptance that Jesus Christ is the Savior of all mankind, even believers. <laughs> That's a pastoral statement that Paul writes to Timothy going like, just remember, they're included too. Okay, listen to this. But thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and manifests through us the sweet aroma of the knowledge of Him in every place. For we are a fragrance of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To one, an aroma from death to death, and the other, an aroma from life to life. Who is adequate to comprehend these things? That's how it says it. Now let me break it down. We are a fragrance of Christ to God. Ontological or existential way of being. Ontological. This is the truth of our being. We are a fragrance of Christ to God. Is it dependent on the way of your being? No. Ontology underlies everything. And wholeness is when the way of your being finally begins to match the truth of your being. And it says, we are this sweet aroma, this fragrance of Christ to those who are being saved and those who are perishing. Being saved and perishing. Ontological or way of being. Way of being. Yes. Yes. Because I might be so stuck and we are so hell conscious that we think perishing means eternal conscious torment. Right? And it's like, oh, you're perishing. That is not an ontological statement. Your salvation as a finished work of Christ is an ontological statement. You who are being saved is this ongoing process of existential experience. It is what is happening in the way of our being so that we'll finally move into wholeness and the way of our being will finally match the truth of our being. And it says, to one, we are an aroma from death to death, and the other, an aroma from life to life. It's a parallelism. And, and here's the crazy thing. It's exactly the opposite of what you would think. To those who are being saved, we are an aroma from death to death. That is exactly what's happened to me. I have died a thousand deaths in order to be resurrected into the truth of my being. It's like I got to lay this life down, this lie, this thing that I believe, this darkness. I have to let go of this bitterness and this unforgiveness. And it's like a death, right? And so to those who are being saved, we are constantly from whose death to what death? from the finished work of Jesus where he absolutely assumed our humanity and destroyed death and the power of it. And now the things that are being burned out of my life and destroyed from death to death are the things that keep me from being whole and free and loving. And to those who are perishing, we are an aroma from life to life. What is it about that person, right? In the midst of my darkness, I am attracted to someone with substance. In the midst of my illusions, I'm attracted to someone who doesn't have any. In the midst of my lying, I want to be around people who tell me the truth. In the midst of feeling like a mirage, I need you to see that there is something here that is worth more than what just appears to be. I need you to see the truth of who I am and call it out. 
And being around you allows me to smell something that is other than the stench of loss and destruction and hurt and brokenness and the lies. We become the aroma and fragrance of Christ to God and to those who are perishing from life to life. There is a possibility. And you will have people come and put their arm around you and they will say, I'm just glad that you exist. Ontology versus the way of being. Right? So, let's finish up with hell. I know, we're just about there, right? I'm really close. I have three, two minutes. Okay, good. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. Do you understand? If this is the truth of God's being, what were we thinking of coming up with eternal conscious torment? And you know what? My people are stuck because they're in a quandary. They don't know how to even challenge the idea of eternal conscious torment without ending up there. <laughs> right? They're in this internal conflict about this. And really, this is a conversation that's going to take more than two minutes. So we will come back and begin with hell and... <laughs> See if I can't scare you out of it, you know? Yeah, so that's where we'll begin our, our next session. But for now, this is not true. It's a lie. You don't have a sin nature. You're made in the image and likeness of God. And the truth of your being has been so covered over by lies that sometimes you have turned your prisons into your homes. It's what you know. And Jesus says, I say nothing unless I hear the Father say it. And his arms outstretched to encompass all of humanity cries out, Papa, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And he says that because he's hearing, my son, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And it is the truth. We are blind. We are lost. We don't know the truth of our being. So the way of our being doesn't match it. And we have such a system of behavioral modification and performance orientation that when somebody happens to fall behaviorally, we don't want them anywhere near, the, near us because they might expose the fact that we think we're a piece of shit too, or we're covering it up through our behavior. And we don't know how to be the fragrance to those who are perishing of life to life. You are pure of heart. You are self-controlled. That's the truth of your being. And it doesn't mean that there aren't some of us who are so damaged in our genetics and in our neural pathways that, you know, we're still stuck in a whole bunch of stuff. Neural pathways can be changed. That's the huge thing about the work of the Holy Spirit. But sometimes our genetics, God doesn't heal it, and we've got to deal with genetics that were passed on to us as part of the brokenness of a planet where we have poisoned the world and introduced all kinds of things that have continuously damaged our children. And you are going to meet some people who are stuck inside of genetics that are absolutely debilitating. Be the fragrance of life to life. See, this is Paul, I judge no one according to the flesh. That's the way of being, is the flesh. The way of being independent of the knowledge of the truth of being is the flesh. That means Paul doesn't even look in the mirror and say, you are such a piece of shit. He refuses 
to buy into the power of shame that attacks the ontology of being human. All things have passed away, everything's new, ontology. But we work out this salvation in fear and trembling, existential experience. Not because we're going to hell, but because the fiery fury of God's love is intent to destroy everything in us that is not of love's kind because we are created in, for, by, through, and now sustained in Him, for Him, by Him, through Him to the praise and the glory of a God who is good and loves us all the time without any shadow of turning. Amen.